Afternoon folks, it's that time of year again, middle of September, autumnal feeling the air where most of my thoughts turns to mushrooms um, and I'm in Calderdale today in one of my favourite areas. I wouldn't say I typically find a lot here but when I find some they're usually good ones. It's very warm actually, we've had a uh, cold this past week but it's humid today, I'm going to have to take my pant legs off and uh, go in shorts I think in a minute. This property up here that I'm approaching, it's got a really nice doorway entrance. It's got a date stone over it, 16th summer, I can't remember. But either side of the door on the door jam, there's uh, these carved human figures. Unfortunately, the hedgerow at the front's grown up, so you can't see it now. I've got an old photo of it somewhere. I can't do this walk without sitting here on this old fallen gate post. It's somewhere I've been sitting for years. Every time I come up here, I have, I have to have a sit down here. I usually have a brew and a butty or something. I love the view across the valley. I've got Turley Halls and Ayer House Moor just coming down behind me. Yeah, I, uh, I love it here. Oh, look at that. I've got a crack in my cup. I can't have a brew. <laughs> I feel sad about that cup. Um, when my mum used to come to her house for a brew, she always liked particular about cups. I just went for a brew, my mum, she always liked a certain sort of shape or style of cup. And that one was one of the kids. It's a pepper pig cup. And when I brewed up for it, she'd always want to brew in that cup, so it's got a, got a lot of sentimental value. It's got a pretty big crack in it now. I like this path. Some bit hard to see in this long grass but some lovely old stone steps must have been an old path linking some of the more edge properties or maybe routes to mills or something look at that lovely little gateway there I love things like that now that's a shame because it's past its best but I think that's chicken of the woods and when it's fresh it's supposed to be a good edible never found it fresh I've never eaten it Something to remember. This lovely moss on this log, like a carpet. I've found some chicken of the woods that's a bit better nick than the other. Not the best, but I reckon I can make use of that. It's more about trying it really, it's one I've wanted to try for a long time. Now according to a local history book, this path I'm on, is an old funeral route and this stone that I walked past many many times without giving it much uh, attention is said to be where coffins were rested on the funeral route and some good marks on it here which I'll show you there's a cross there's a backward C there's a funny looking N and this so a W, which I think is more intersecting V's, is something called a Marion Mark. Now this Marion Mark is said to be an old Catholic symbol and Marion is spelled M-A-R-I-A-N. I've just noticed something else on here that I'll show you a date. The 1650 I think that reads. Since I got back from Madeira a few weeks ago, I've been out a few times. 
uh, looking for mushrooms. But I've just not been finding anything. Uh, it has been quite dry around here. But anyway, last week uh, I found my first things um, in a local local park. I found some millers and uh, my first penny bun, just a small one, uh, but I got it before the slugs did too much damage. It's a horrible wet Sunday in the South Pennines today and I'm on my local patch. I'm walking up Ogden or Python Valley if you want. Uh, so far I've not managed to find a single edible mushroom in the valley which is unusual uh, for, for this time of year but we'll give it a go. I've got a little window and I could have easily stayed in this sort of weather but I just thought I'd bugger it. I think I should have stopped in and watched the darts. Not a very nice day at all. I'm not finding much either. I found a few slug chewed brown birch billies, but there weren't enough left for me to take. So I'm going into woods now, so uh, fingers crossed I find some. Look at this here. I found a massive set, a bit chewed, but that's coming with me. Well, despite the weather, it was definitely worth coming out just for that blooming big uh, penny bone, as big as a dinner plate. What I've done, I've sort of prepared it. I've cut all dodgy looking bits off and I'm still left with loads of nice, nice clean white mushroom flesh, if you like. How do folks? I'm back up Ogden today. Now it's a lot drier since my last there uh, than my last time I was up here, but it's blowing a gale. Easterly wind right in my face. Quite pleasant actually though, it's right fresh. Uh, yeah, so I'm back looking for mushrooms, edible mushrooms. And back there I've just picked up a couple of brown birch billies. Not very big, but you've got to get them sharpest before slugs get them. That were nice, a common data dragonfly. They're a late season species. I've seen them in, in the first week of November. This banking where I'm on of this res, a couple of years ago, I found something, a, a, a mushroom, quite a rare one. Um, very distinctive, a blue mushroom called Entoloma atromadidum. I think nowadays, some some bits down here. Um, some people call it the big blue pink gill. Finally a lot of these look like eggs. They're called a uh, common earth ball I think. And you cut them inside all the all like the spongy bits black. It's the autumn equinox today, it's the 21st of September and uh, maybe I'm imagining it but it definitely feels like a bit of a change today the sun's, I don't know, it's just, just a feeling probably but the sun just seems that little bit weaker and from uh, tonight the, the night and day are equal and then from tomorrow the nights will be longer than the days Bloody awful, not like autumn and winter.
come a bit further afield today folks, I'm still in Lancashire but I'm about, I'm about an hour's drive from home. I'm at um, a nature reserve called Mia Sands Wood, which is on the Lancashire Plain, not far from Martin Mia uh, Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust Reserve, so there's lots of goosey sounds. Uh, there are quite a few mushrooms actually, um, but not much in the way of edibles so far. I have picked up a few amethyst deceivers though, which, which I'll take with me. Some fantastic sort of trees here that are usually good horse species for mushrooms. Massive oak here, beauty. Lots of big oaks, a lot of birch. This is a passable edible. This is brown birch bully. I'll take this. I've managed to find a little side path that's taken me off the main sort of walking route round the reserve. It's just too bleeding busy. But there's a nice area of beech trees here. Beech are good areas for mushrooms. Well, in a good year, not found out here, but some lovely trees. The trees around here are really nice. I said earlier that this was um, a Lancashire, uh, what are they called? Lancashire Wildlife Trust Reserve. And of all the Wildlife Trust Reserves I visit, uh, the big three are Lancashire, Cumberland and Yorkshire. And do you know what? It pains me, but the Lancashire one is the worst of the lot. The reserves always seem a little bit, do you know, a bit bit untidy, I don't, something about them, a bit, so they're not particularly well managed. Uh, the ones up in, uh, the Cumberland ones are the best of the lot, they're really good. Some great reserves around, around, the, around the edges of the Lake District, especially on the southern side above uh, Morecambe Bay. Look at these uh, corn on cobs here, it's like a nab one. Turned out nice again, sun's come out. Right, I'm nearly done here I think, and although I've not found a right lot, it's definitely got potential, I might come back here in a good year. Um, not far from here, there's a National Trust property called Rufford Old Hall, so I'm a member at National Trust, I might go and have a shuffle around there, I might have some woods or something. Now there's a few puffballs around here, and I know the common puffball, when it's young, is edible. Look at this here, Flyer Garrick just sprouting up in this churchyard. I've just had a walk through the grounds of the local church, St Mary the Virgin. See if I could find out there. Um, I did pick up a few. Um, one decent edible, nice good condition brown birch belly. There's also quite a few wax caps uh, and they're indicative of old unimproved grasslands so if you're seeing them you're, you're on a pretty decent habitat. Now I've just found a nice little cluster of edibles all under one oak tree on, the, on this lawn. Um, two species and I'll show you them both. Yeah, so what I've found, the first one is the best here. I've found three. Look at these. These are Babelites Imlaria badia, I think the Latin name was last time I looked. Very similar to the SEP, apparently just as tasty as the SEP. And if you look underneath, let me see if I can cover my face and show you, there's like a blue stain there. So when you press the pores, you'll see a blue stain. Now the other one I've found, 
quite a nice example as well. This is the blusher, uh, Amanita rubescens. And this is the first year I'm going to eat one of these. It's took me a while to be comfortable with the ID with these, but it has a pink blush on the stem. And again, I don't know whether you can see this, really hard. You see that skirt underneath the stem? If it's got striations on it, then it's the blusher. If it was smooth, I'd be giving it a wide berth. Absolutely typical, isn't it? I uh, don't take my recording gear with me today and, and then have a right, right good mushroom hunting session. Um, so what I've done, I've, I've put them together and, and I'll just talk you through what I've found. Some, some really nice ones today. Three different species and three of my favourite species as well. So there they are. Um, we've got this group here, these white ones here, and this little one up top here. So yeah, the, these are quite well known to people. These are seps, also go by the name of Penny Bone or Porcini. Um, I really like these. They have a I feel weighty, a, a, a chunky mushroom. I wouldn't say that the the tastiest, but they do have a nice texture and and they're good at absorb, ab, absorbing flavours. In, in terms of flavour on their own, I, I think they're quite bland. Easy to identify, really. They've got like a a matte brown cap, quite a wide bulbous stem, and I don't know whether you can see on the stem. There's like white netting that's called reticulation i think so yeah they, they give the game away for these right these next ones these white ones are one called the miller and quite distinctively white not the most appetizing looking thing really several giveaways the stem is not in the middle of, of, of the base it tends to be at one side the surface kind of feels a bit suede to me, almost like a fat, really fine nap. Um, but the main thing, really quite distinctive, the smell of wet dough, hence the name of the miller, flour mill. Um, and another interesting thing about these, if you see these, have a good look around, because quite often they grow with these seps and other, other uh, Belita species I've seen them with. So I think these, need these basically whether these need the mycelium of, of seps and other belitus yeah I'm, I'm guessing something like that that nearly always together this rather attractive one with the chunky stem and the orange cap this is meadow wax cap found a little pointing instrument a little garden cane so here we've got like a, a fully grown one here and a little, a little babby one growing at the base there but yeah this one uh, it's common near me uh, it grows a lot in res reservoir embankments in south pennines this that's where i often look for this but this one i found it in a churchyard in saddleworth this is a nice edible i, I like these they have a uh, quite a good texture uh yeah i think i mentioned it before chunky stem and a nice orange cap and, and yeah they look they, they feel quite waxy and gelatinous in the wet Good ones, all of them. I like them.